Okay. I've handed out the, sh the matrix here. This is, has actually been used. Um, I just might mention this. I use this in three different history classes. Three different teachers teaching three different ways um, for the same, the same question. This, this one, um, this particular matrix was actually what I would call a backward mapping because we were using it for revision. And I went into the class you know, to help the kids revise using Alarm. They're learning for their big exams coming up. Um, and I, I just put this template up. Probably looked better than that, but I put up the template so they could see it. Uh, and this became uh, the template for the kids to, revi to revise their notes by, to find out what they know, find out what they don't know. Uh, and, and to teach them some skills maybe they still need to learn. With any class I go into, or any subject I go into, I'll, st I'll tell the kids, look, I do not know your content. You may not know it at all, but I know how to learn it. So the way I will learn it is just ask you questions along the way, along these categories. Okay? And so I went in. Perhaps if it were a forward mapping, I might say, I would have told them this international studies in peace and conflict, our main topic. I would have said we're trying to understand this era of Israeli conflict as part of modern history between those dates. Yeah, so that was our basic. And then I may tell them what we're trying, some explanation, brief explanation about what we're trying to study. And then I'll, I'll follow it this way. So I went into the class, asked the kids, okay, under name and define, I want to know the events. What happened? What were the events that happened between 68 and 96? And the teacher actually wanted eight. I only have room for three, but one, two, three, up to eight. And when I did that, some kids knew six, some kids knew three, some kids knew four, none of them knew eight. So we have to figure it out, okay, that's what you're missing. <coughs> so we at least got those straightened out as revision. But you can see in my forward mapping, I would have covered all eight. Then I said, okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to work across this learning grid. Remember, this is my learning template, my running sheet for learning, my note taking, if you like. So many times kids take notes and they write down everything I say, but there's no organization to it. So I say, okay, on event number one, what are the details? What happened? Remember, I'm on the what. What happened? They give me the facts, the details, examples, and so forth. And then I say, okay, what was the objective? What was the impact from this? Was it towards uh, settlement or disruption? Okay, they should know that for event number one. Then they go to analyze the, where I say relationships. How did it happen? Yeah. How did that objective happen? Was it military? Was it money? Peace negotiation? What was it? How did that, that bring about that objective or, or not? Yeah. I then drew a line here. The line in the sand. Because now I'm coming to them to think a little bit, to, to feel this a little bit concerning the positives and or negatives for this event, all on its own. I want each event evaluated on it by its own merits. So I think for number one, like for memory, because it was I did this quite a while ago, there were two negatives and a slightly positive. Now they could come to therefore. They make a judgment here. Therefore, for this event, it was this amount of success, or lack of success. For event number two, we did the same thing. What happened? What, was it? what were the objectives? What was the impact? How did it happen? And what were the positives, negatives? I think under this one, we got three negatives, no positives. Okay? And then they can again come, therefore, thus and so forth. 
We did all eight events. Brought all eight events out. And I think overall, out of the eight events, from memory, from, there were eight events, so I think there were two positive and six negative out of all these events. So what they do, when, they, when they're evaluating at this level, they come down now here to critically evaluate. That's why I keep this separate. And it's one line, because they're summarizing all that. They're synthesizing at the evaluative level for overall, out of all eight events, yeah, just like when I did my teaching program, there were five, well, three were, three were pretty good, two not so good. It's the same skill. So overall, out of the eight events, two, and they could write a sentence here. Now this is a very difficult sentence to write. When you have eight, they can say, although there was some success towards a peace negotiation, however, on the other hand, by contrast, it was overwhelmingly negative. It's not an easy sentence to write. But they have to give an overall, and it can, it can involve sort of, it can, involve, it can involve an overall comparison or contrast. Or it can just be a summary of the lot. Depends on the question. But when they saw, finally, oh, six and two, they said, oh, no wonder there's still conflict going on. They could see it right like that. Because they, their thinking process and all the kids were able to come out to here. They had difficulty in here, making their judgments here, but when they came out here, they could see. And overall, although it's a difficult thing to write, they could see it. And when they come down to the concept, they were wanting, ah, oh, that's why there's more or less settlement to the conflict, to this whole topic. I ask a question here, it's not on here, but I ask a different question about appreciate. The question I ask at appreciate is, why is it important that I evaluate each one on its own? Why should I be able to evaluate each step, each event in history? If I have a system or a process, why should I be able to evaluate each step? Why should I evaluate each of my units or my parts of my, my whole program? Why should I evaluate each of the parts and pieces to, and the, the, you know, the good parts, the bad parts to a microwave oven? Why should I be able to evaluate all the different proce procedures and processes of getting rid of cancer? You see, it's just life. It's a life process we go through. So they come down to here. That is a filled in sheet of their learning, especially for revision. But in my teaching, I could have, I could have, some teachers will teach up to content for each event and then go to this. Some teachers will do this all the way across. It's up to whatever style you like to follow. I'm not changing your style of teaching. I'm just trying to help teachers and students become aware of these the scales, the gradation of this learning process. Okay. Here's how alarm works to become the response. Once I understand the question, I said, according to alarm, you take whatever is last, those three, whatever is last, and you put first. That becomes paragraph one. Yeah? Then, this becomes paragraph two, paragraph three, paragraph four. Suddenly, I've got the structure from my learning, what my structure is for my response. Paragraph one, answer the question, that's what I think, that's my judgment. Paragraph one, paragraph two, three, four. Then, this becomes sentence one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I have is paragraphs, oops, going down, 
and sentences going across. My learning all the time has been informing, helping me shape my response. There's my judgment to that question. There's the answer. Oops. There's the answer to the question. The extent of success overall. That goes first, answer the question, and here's my support. My learning is justifying, I think this. This is my judgment. For the advanced learners, I said, I can't do it on the board, this is the template. So, this goes first, paragraph one, sentence two, three, uh, paragraph two, three, four. And the sentences go right across. There's a, a higher level. I said it's sort of three-dimensional. It really, it's folding like that, but it also folds around like that. This is the highest order depth of feeling or understanding of that event. So that comes around, touches that, links with that, and that becomes sentence one. Why? Because that's the answer for this event to that question. That's the answer to that question for that event. So I say the extent of success of this particular event was such and such. And then I prove it. I teach it. Same here. That's the extent of success or not for that event. And there's my proof, my evidence, my support. It's what I was using when I was teaching the kids. Now they use, the kids are using it to teach me. This is beautiful because I can color this, code this in. If I can color it in in their learning, I can color it in on their writing and their response. They write me an essay, there's colors missing, I go back and I say, oh, you didn't have this in your answer. You didn't give me any details, sorry, details. You were missing some evidence. You told me this, but you didn't talk about how and you need to do this and then this. So I can go back to their worksheet. This is their worksheet, their running sheet. And I can look back and go, oh, you were missing these things. What was happening? You see, and I can fill it in. Either you didn't know the content or you didn't have the skill. The beauty of this, and it is, it is beautiful, because the kids gain now self-knowledge. They learn about themselves. You see, and that, that never ends. They suddenly see, oh, that's me. That's me that's missing that. Not him over there or her over there but me, that's me personally. And they can sound, sort of reflect on their learning. The basic thing is, is when they, when they write something and they're teaching, that's what learning is. Learning how to learn is teaching oneself. And that's sort of the whole ball, <laughs> the whole sphere of learning. I've just tried to open it so that you see what belongs, what, where, how, why. It's, it's all there. What I'd like to show you next is to give you the skill maybe of how do I make a template for myself. And if you can see that, you don't need me. <laughs> You're an independent learner. <laughs>